Hey, what's up? I'm Russ, and if you're having a dapper day, tap that thumbs up icon. So, while I was reading through Warren Buffett's letter to his partners in 1965, which he wrote in January of 1966, I came across this really interesting quote where he was referencing academician Billy Rose, who said, quote, You've got a harem of 70 girls. You don't get to know any of them very well. And I thought that was a really interesting quote, and it got me looking into some of my stocks a little bit more closely, and I came across good old Campbell's soup, which I've held in the Roth since I opened it up a few years ago, but Campbell's Soup I bought because it's a product that I've known since I was a child. It's iconic, I'm guessing across the world, and it was kind of in that Peter Lynch fashion that I bought products that I see people using. But what poor growth Campbell's Soup as a dividend stock does have, it only has a dividend growth streak of one year, but that has not increased in the last six quarters where it's been frozen at 37 cents. And they have a five-year CAGR of 3% and a 20-year CAGR of only 2% per year. So that's just not going to cut it for the stocks I'm looking for that have really nice dividend growth. And as I've been progressing through this journey, I want those companies that maybe they don't have a huge starting dividend yield right now, but I want those that have really nice and solid long-term dividend growth. So we sold 10 shares of Campbell's Soup at a price of $47.51, which gave us $475 and 10 cents of cash. Now we did make about $20, which was good for about a 4.3% gain. And that had us at about a 3.25% yield on cost giving us $14 in annual dividend income. And if you watch the channel, I had been saying I wanted to own more Johnson & Johnson. They may be a little bit pricey, but I think they are one of the most solid dividend companies. So that's what I did. We took some of that money and rolled it into one share of Johnson & Johnson at $179, where Johnson & Johnson has a bit of a better compound annual growth rate, 6.6% the last year, 6% the last five years, and a very very, very nice 9% the last 20 years on top of a 59-year dividend growth streak. You may not be aware of this, but in 2023, Johnson & Johnson is undergoing a split of their own, where they're going to be splitting off the consumer health segment, which is like Neosporin and Band-Aids, and then they're also going to be splitting off the medical devices and the pharmaceuticals into their own entity. So that share of J&J &J we added at $179 gives us a yield on cost of 2.53% and added $4.52 of dividend income to the portfolio. And then next we added one share of Lowe's, which is a newer position, at $203.13. Now Lowe's has a last dividend increase of 33%, a five-year CAGR of 18%, and a whopping 24% CAGR over the last 20 years to go on top of a 59-year dividend increase streak. One thing I like about Lowe's is, yes, they don't have the biggest yield right now, but those increases are very stout. So this is something I'm learning to look at a little bit more is the dividend increases more so than the starting yield. They are due for a dividend increase right around the corner in August of 2022. And that share at $203.13 gives us a starting yield on cost of 1.58% and it added about $3.20 of dividend income to the portfolio. So after buying Johnson & Johnson and Lowe's, we had about $92.97 left. Now I have nine shares of ticker IIPR, Innovative Industrial Properties, and I wanted that 10th share. So I used that money to give us about a 64% discount on the share price at $146. Now they're a bit of a newer company and their last full year dividend increase was 28%. And they have been increasing that dividend ever since they came about about four years ago. IIPR has been under the gun. Now Blue Orca is an investment advisory 
firm and they put out a short report on IIPR and a lot of people didn't like it. Now the cannabis market is under a little bit of pressure as well. So they have a lot of headwinds and because of that, they have been dropping like a rock and I may be guilty of trying to catch a bit of a falling knife, but I think IIPR is going to be just fine in the long term. They've refuted everything that was in the short report and with good reason. So I believe in IIPR. And again, this is only 10 shares. So this is why it does help to diversify. But that share of IIPR was about a 4.79% yield on cost, which is very stout. And that added about $7 of dividend income to the portfolio. So with those three shares added of Johnson & Johnson, Lowe's, and IIPR, that gave us about $14.72. So it worked out to be just about negligible with the annual dividend income we lost and what it was replaced with, but I feel much better about getting bigger and growing dividends with these three companies than I do with Campbell's Soup. Love Campbell's Soup. We're still going to continue to use their products, but as a dividend growth company, I can do a lot better. And that is the name of the game. I'm looking for dividends that are consistently and predictably largely growing. So I would love to know what companies do you hold that you're not thrilled with their dividend growth and would you potentially think about cutting and eliminating from your portfolio and going after something that you know a little bit better? Please share it in the comments below because you know where the comments go. And if you would like to see a fantastic interview and maybe learn a little bit more about dividend growth investing, I did an interview with Fabio Marciano, who wrote The Dividend Millionaire. Wonderful ebook, very in depth. You're not going to get through it in a night. He put a lot of work, time, and thought into this ebook, and I was blown away. So we chatted about it. Click this little box next to my head to get to that video, and we will talk to you there.